What's up, guys? This is David, a.k.a. Reverse Long. Today I'm here with Sonny Harris. We're at the Conscious Trading Conference 3. Um, amazing conference. We just concluded it, and now we're doing a bonus episode, you know? So it's like once, like in a movie, once the, 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 the credits get through, sometimes you get a surprise at the end. This is that. So today we have Sonny Harris here. I had Sonny Harris on the Friendly Bear podcast um, a couple times, I believe. And, you know, she has a unique background. She's a mathematician and uh, has been around the markets. I found out about Sonny Harris through the Chat with Traders podcast when I was in Tokyo. I don't even remember, Sonny, I remember uh, I, I mentioned that I was listening to your podcast and Chat with Traders when I was climbing the Tokyo Tower. Oh, yes, you're talking. Yeah, and that, so that was great. And um, so, and Sonny's from Paris. Well, you're not from Paris. You've been to Paris. 13 yeah. times. Yeah, 13 times. Wow, so Paris has the real Eif uh, Eiffel Tower. Not The Tokyo Tower is an imitation version, the Japanese version of the Eiffel Tower. Anyway, that's another story. So, Sonny, how are you doing, first of all? I'm doing great, thank you. It was a good conference. Yeah, it was cool. It was cool. So, very unique. We have Sam Degash in town, uh, the Mind Alchemist. And Sam has a podcast, which I encourage him to do, called Rising Minds. And he had you recently on Rising Minds. Yeah. So how'd that go? It went great. It hasn't posted yet, though. Yeah, it hasn't posted yet. Um, I haven't seen it yet. Sam keeps it top secret, keeps all the, the podcast top secret. So I hope this B-roll that we're doing after the show doesn't turn out just to be the bloopers. No, it's, <laughs> it, no not the bloopers. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to, okay, so let's uh, let people know first uh, that they're not familiar with your background. I think it's very unique. You know, because you've been you've been trading for a long time, and you're you know one of the the female uh, you know prolific female traders in the space. So like you know, it's 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 I think it's you know to let some of the people that listen to the Friendly Bear, and especially the people that attend the conference, to get them more familiar mm -hmm. with you know with with the, yourself. So so Sunny, um, for the listeners and the viewers and the people in the conference. Um, Maybe take them through your journey with trading a little bit, how mm -hmm. you got started, sure. and uh, some of your background. Sure. Um, I started as a baby, but then I grew up and became a mathematician. I knew I lived in, uh, well, very near, in the mountains near Asheville, North Carolina, where they just had the big uh, hurricane. And I decided that the way out of there was through an education. So I did as much as I could. I got a bachelor's and a master's and a PhD in math. And I got, a, I retired when I was 30 from a software firm that I'd created with a couple, a couple other guys. And after retiring, I got a degree in photography. So my passion, first passion at that time, was traveling and taking photographs. I love to travel. So, uh, as I said, I've been to Paris 13 times, doing a lot of photographs. And uh, then I, well, before I went, I decided to invest, the, well, I sold my software company and had a whole lot of money. And uh, I gave it to traders, money managers, and it took them three weeks to lose $75,000. And I thought, well, I can do that poorly on my own, so I <laughs> decided to teach myself to do it. And I, I'm just self-taught. I didn't have a mentor. I had, I modeled myself after two people, though, Larry Williams and Jake Bernstein. Uh, I took, back then, you, there was no internet, so I took newsletters. The newsletters were very popular. And I, one of the newsletters I subscribed to was Larry Williams' uh, CTI Trading. And I noticed that he lived down the street from me. So I called him up and I said, could I come meet you? <laughs> well, I didn't know he was so famous I should never do that. But he said, sure, come on over. So I had him show me what he does, which he's very generous, very generous with his methods and his story and everything. And uh, we became friends, and I just continued to ask him questions. Awesome. And before we get started, uh, Sonny, maybe you want to get this microphone and move it up a bit. This one, uh, this one right here. Okay. Let's see. There we go. Usually it's Is that better? Yeah, that's better. Okay. Um, for the podcast. So, Sonny, you said you decided to model yourself after those two traders. Well, who were they again? 
Larry Williams. Larry Williams. And Jake Bernstein. And Jake, what, 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 what uh, made you like model yourself after them? What did you like about them? Well, I knew they were, or at least I believed, that they were both successful traders. Mm -hmm. So I found the two most successful people I could think of and started copying. You know, copy success. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's like what we were talking about with the podcast we did earlier, uh, emulating, and Sam talks about like embodying the the traders that you know, mm -hmm. the people you want that are successful in the space, like seeing what worked for them and copying success. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And uh, so with photography, so photography, from what I know, is like an art and a science, mm -hmm. and trading is an art and a science. Mm -hmm. So, and you went to Paris. You loved photography. You did photography in Paris. Um, with trading, did, how did you find that correlation, art and a science, you know, and how, were you able to relate to trading just like photography, mm -hmm. kind of, like mm -hmm. use that creative mm -hmm. mind and the math analytical? Yeah. I I found that I could see patterns in charts, mm -hmm. and that pulls in the whole artistic bent. So I could, I could, I call it blurring my eyes and looking at the chart, because you can, you can see the patterns that way, or at least I can. And, uh. It was largely the combination of those two. But my bent on trading is that I take everything apart mathematically. So I analyze the heck out of things. I'm always asking what is true. That's my biggest question. When I look at a chart, I say what is true. When I look at a trader, I ask what is true. You know, And I find out all the things that are actually true, and then I copy those. So your math, math, mathematics. So when did mathematics be, come into play with you? Because I know you, you know you go heavy. You, you're a mathematician. So were, did you study in, in? Did this come before trading? Like you were just yeah, you there, studied math. Well, I when I started my first master's thesis, the uh, advisor wanted me to do Fibonacci numbers. Now I'm 19 years old, and you don't know anything yet at that age. But I said, I'll never do Fibonacci numbers. They don't have any real application. And he said, well, you can use them in the stock market. I said, I'll never have any interest in the stock market. <laughs> Famous last words, right? Wow, so Fibonacci. So so what, what did you find out about the Fibonacci's? Where, do you still use any? Oh, yes. I use them every day. Yeah. They're on every chart I look at. So for those that are, because, um, I know a lot of uh, our communities, I know what Fibonacci's are and the way I use it, but I would love to hear you describe how you use Fibonacci because like it goes back into like the mathematics from Fibonacci, the guy from the Renaissance mm -hmm. and that found this number in nature, this repetitive number and pattern. Mm -hmm. And because from my architecture days, I remember going to Vicenza, Italy and uh, Palladio was the main architect of the town, designed all these masterpieces, and he collaborated with Fibonacci to come up with the, the golden section. Golden ratio. Golden ratio. So how would you, it's, it's a beautiful you know, thing to know, just in general, with mathematics, art, uh, you know, everything, now, and training, of course. Mm -hmm. So how, how would you describe it? How would you describe it? Well, the series starts with one, one, two, and you add each, the two subsequent numbers together, two adjacent numbers together, to get the next number. So one, one, two, three, five, eight, thirteen, etc. And they go infinitum. But um, it's the ratio of the two two adjacent numbers and then every other number and then the third number that gives you the percentages that we use in the stock market, 23.6, 38.2, etc. 61.8. And those ratios are der derived from the numbers themselves. And the way we use them is uh, we find that they're all, not only all through nature, you know, with sunflowers and uh, replication of rabbits and things like that, our faces are divided into Fibonacci numbers. The people that you think are the most attractive have Fibonacci ratios in their faces. When you're not attracted to someone, Take a picture and measure their face. You likely don't get good Fibonacci ratios. So that's important in that way. And it's certainly true in buildings. The most pleasing buildings have beautiful Fibonacci ratios in them. Yeah, that's how I got exposed to it, because the facades of buildings, that's like what you see, the, the aesthetics. And the Fibonacci mm -hmm. was part of that. So 
how did you, okay, so in these days with the computers, I remember when we, we spoke last time in the podcast, how you use the computer into incorporate you know, the math, mathematics and the Fibonacci ratios and all yeah. that. So how'd you get involved with all that? Well, I, I uh, in, so I started trading in 1981 and we really didn't have computers yet. So I was doing a lot of calculations on a lot of lined paper and graph paper, and I was plotting my own charts. It's actually a really good exercise if you plot your own charts every day, draw everything by hand. Your neurology will learn the patterns of the market if you do it by hand. If you just pop it up on a computer, you really don't get it. It doesn't, it doesn't sink into your soul. But when you're doing it by hand, every single day, you pick it up. You pick up patterns. And you find out what's true real quickly because you're, do, you're doing it by hand. It's like taking notes in class. If you don't take notes in class, you limit your learning. But if you take notes constantly in trading, you learn something. Yeah, and um, so and then I And then I turned to computers when they came out because I found that uh, calculating all these things by hand was tedious. Yeah, and Sonny, would you describe yourself as a systematic trader? Or oh, yes. No, I'm definitely systematic. So, yeah, so um, the reason why I'm asking is like, you know, I know some traders that are system traders or quant traders, and they, that's what their identity starting out, and they use, they rely on the computer to collect their data for them and to make, they want a, they want a shortcut mm. to, to this kind of approach. And, you know, I think collecting that data first and seeing the whole process by hand and, mm -hmm. and picking it apart, and then eventually, once you master that, then you you graduate to mm -hmm. the computer. Mm -hmm. It's almost you know it's almost like you got to earn the rights to use <laughs> yeah. the computer. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. Is that the way you approached it, or it just happened? Well, to be I, like it just that? happened to be that way. The there were no computers, yeah, so yeah. you know there was no internet. There were no computers. I had to call the floor of the exchange to place a trade. You, know, you get a trader who's on the floor hand signaling your trades in, and uh, you do a lot of screaming and yelling so they can hear you. And you Over know. the phone? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and they weren't cell phones. They were phones with cords. Yeah. So what a game changer. I always tell people, like, because I, I'm a, I started trading in 2016, and um, this is kind of a new phenomenon. Like if you go to my office in the US Bank Tower, I have this crazy computer and all this data feed and like all fast stuff. Like this is not, e my, the way I trade is not even possible 20, 30 years ago. Right. So in, in fact, the barrier to entry was so hard because you, you needed uh, to, to enter and exit a trade was so costly. Mm -hmm. Probably like $150 to get in the trade, $50 to get out, I don't know. Yeah. That's what it was when I started. And probably other, other, a bunch of other barriers. And, and the margin was 50 grand. So yeah. that was a barrier to entry in the beginning. That wasn't a problem for me because I told you I retired at 30 with plenty of money. So that was not a problem. But, um, you know, I just, I just learned it all by hand, doing one little plot at a time. I still keep charts of everything. So if I want to lose weight, I draw the line on the, the line on the chart, and I write down my weight every single day. If I want to eat a certain number of calories, I'll plot it on a chart. If I want to make a certain amount of money, I'll plot it on a chart, and I have to stay to that line, whatever my line that that I had drawn. So I analyze everything in the beginning and say where do I want to go and what do I want to achieve. Yeah. And I draw these charts. Nice. So, so still, it's part of your process. Oh yes, yeah. yes. I do a live trading room every morning, where I let you watch me trade, and of course, what you do with that is your choice. Some people enter the same trades I'm do doing. Some people don't, but I'm very open about what I'm doing, and I'm very willing to answer questions and tell you exactly what I'm doing and what I'm looking at, and it's replicable. You know, you. You too can do what I do, excuse me. Cut. Okay, you too can do what I do, because uh, I explained the whole thing, yeah. step by step. Gotcha, so so during, um, I remember last time we spoke to, you mentioned the dot-com boom. So what was the period that you were speaking about uh, in the Chat with Traders podcast? 
what years were those? Those like big years that you had. The mo like oh, I've had a lot of big years. I my two. I've had two down years. I've been in the trading for almost 44 years now, and I've had two negative years. So they happen, even if you know what you're doing. Negative years happen, and I lost 11 percent in the dot com bust. Everybody else lost 60, 70, 80 percent. So I was actually doing pretty well, but to me that was a negative year. You know, it was a big deal. Previous year I made 111 percent, so it more than made up for it. But uh, you know, it's boom and bust all over again all the time. Uh huh. So you know, there's the, always another crash ahead of us. Yeah, the bust was 2000. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the the boom. For those that don't know, the the dot com mania was just insane. What do you think that was equivalent or almost not equivalent? But similar to the pandemic mania, because the pandemic is like things were pretty no, no, no. The dot com was much higher, much faster, much higher, much faster. Mm -hmm. But people weren't really trading. Were, were you trading out of computers back then? Two thousand. Oh yeah. E trade was just new, but were, was that really prevalent? I didn't use E trade. Um, by then, I was using TradeStation, and TradeStation has its own brokerage. Mm. So I've been trading through TradeStation for many, many years. So I just push a button when I want to make a trade, and it goes straight through TradeStation. And I have all my research programmed into what I call my sunny bands, and that's what governs all my trading. Excellent. So, so TradeStation, I know they do algorithmic trading. D do you, did you do that back then, or do you do that now? I started, I, I, you could say I was algorithmic right from the beginning, because I've I believe that if you want to be successful, you need to write down your rules. You need to know where you're going. You need to know how much you need to make every single day. For instance, let's say you want to make uh, six-figure six income. So I, of course, take 120000 because it's divisible nicely. So let's say your goal is 120000 a year. If you think that's how much I have to make a year you're, and that's all you've got, you won't get to it. So divide it by 12 now. You've got 10000 a month, right? Now that's a little more achievable, achievable. If you divide that by the 20 days that we have in a trading month, that's 500 a day. 500 a day is doable. That's five $100 trades. Yeah. So if you break it down into steps like that, you can actually do it. But if you say, I'm going to make 120000 this year, you won't do it. And you were speaking about the sunny bands, so maybe uh, can you tell us about the sunny bands? How you go about that? Yeah, um, I found very early in my career that moving averages whipsaw you to death and you lose all your money. So you could make money in trends and you could do really great, and then as soon as you get to the sideways period, which is 70% of the time, 30% of the time it trends, 70% it's sideways, and you have to figure out how to make money during the sideways period. Moving averages go like this, back and forth, back and forth, and you just get whipped to death. So I thought, mm, I've got a degree in mathematics. I think I'll use this to figure out how to cure whipsaw. So that was what I was doing, is researching curing whipsaw, and I figured out how to do it, and that's my dynamic moving average. So it's constantly changing its own inputs. You know, standard moving average will have 9,18 in it, which is uh, sh uh, short-term moving average, 9 long-term, 18. This one doesn't have any inputs for links. It calculates its own length dynamically with every tick of the market. So I don't encounter the whipsaw. And when, when did you first start to imply, like, apply that? Uh, 19, let's see, it was three years into trading, so 84. So, you, But I'm doing it on paper, Yeah. right? I'm doing this on paper back then. And they did have uh, computers by 84, but they were kind of primitive compared to what mm -hmm. we have now. And uh, I started with, with my DMA, my dynamic moving average, and I follow the system. Every time it says to take a trade, I take a trade. The only time I feel like I've lost for the day is if I didn't follow the system. Mm -hmm. If I followed the system and it had a negative day, that's okay. I was following the system. And if you have not fully tested your system, 
then you can't follow it because you don't trust it. So trace station really is not an algorithmic box of any kind. It's a software box. So it, it not only does charting and brokerage, but it, allow, it has a little programming language called easy language, which is truly easy. I can teach you enough easy language in an hour to get you going. But uh, you, you program your, your strategy ideas, and then you can test them and see if they're actually profitable. And uh, so, so how often do you adjust it, or do you, do you make any changes at all to the Sunny Bands, or? I haven't made any changes in 37 years. Wow. So it's like a timeless uh, strategy. Well, it's self-adjusting. So no uh, matter oh, what. self-adjusting. That's yeah. right. That's right. So no matter what environment we're in, it adjusts. I see. And what um, you, what uh, does it do stocks? Does it do what? Any symbol, any time frame. So it's a universal. Yeah. Thing. Now, um, for people that want to use it, how, what's the, do they have to like strictly let it do what it does? Like, what's mm -hmm. is it like human error? Like they they can mess it up? Like they? Well, you can you can not take the trade when it calls it. I, I mean, see. that's human error. Or you can try to second guess it. That's human error. You can be in a bad mood today and. You can't follow it very well. Yeah. You know, if I've had a really rough day for some reason, and I wake up too tired or something, I won't trade. Mm. I mean, I recognize what's going on in my own neurology, and I will avoid those days. Um, but normally, I trade every day, mm -hmm. 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Wow. But I, I have a live trading room. Uh, we're up 440 percent, 40. 6% so far for the year. Mm -hmm. I do one hour every morning. You have to subscribe, of course. I don't give that away for free. But you can have a free trial. You can come twice for free. And uh, I just follow the rules. I call them like I see them. I say exactly what I'm looking at and what I'm going to trade. And if it does this, then I'm going to do such and such. And I go long and short, long and short. I typically make about five trades. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm looking at those lines to cross. And when they, when the right pattern sets up, I take the trade. Awesome. And, and if it doesn't set up, I do nothing. Do you, do you journal, like if you're hesitant to a trade and it works against you, but if you were on, if you followed the system to the T, it would have worked out. And then the next time you, uh, you know, you don't do that again. Is that, so what do people struggle with if they have, if they, if they have those kind of issues, like we were talking earlier mm -hmm. with someone that has fear, that they, they have these human emotions that get in the way of the, mm -hmm. of the sunny bands, let's mm -hmm. say, for example. Yeah, that happens. Yeah. If you don't follow the rules, it won't work. Yeah. You know, you, you got to follow. I came up here on GPS. If I hadn't followed those rules, I still wouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. You follow rules all day long. You, you, ch you use a recipe. You use GPS to get where you're going. We used to use maps back in the old day. I don't know if you've heard of maps. MapQuest. Yeah. 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 I used to have a program, I don't even remember what it's called now, that would route several different stops for you and draw it out on a piece of paper. We don't even need that now. It talks to you. Yeah, I remember you would have to. Uh, uh, my parents had like a map on the visor of the car. Yes. And you pull out the map and you plot. Yeah, you have to pull over, hopefully. Yeah, or like when I traveled and study abroad, there would be a leader of the group that could understand the map Yeah. and uh, would navigate for us. But if you can't follow the map, you're not following the rules, you can't yeah. get anywhere. Yeah. You get lost. Yeah. And it's it's no different with trading sunny bands. You have to follow the rules. Yeah. And the rules are not difficult. There are three rules, and I've got a nine-page presentation that tells you just exactly what the rules are and what I do. So three pages of that are disclaimer. So I've, I've got a six-page document that tells you exactly what I do. And it's available for free on my website. Anybody that wants to look up moneymentor.com. Awesome. Yeah, actually, in the Chat with Traders podcast that you did, you put you you, you mentioned your phone number at the yes. end. I think yes. I, I, that's how we got in touch. I called it. Yeah, it works, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. 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 Seven six zero nine zero eight. Check it out. Yeah. Seven six zero nine zero eight three zero seven zero. Yeah. It's right at the top of my website, and 
Here it is. And so, I answer it. So, Sonny, um, when did you know right away that you were a system quantitative trader? Like, because, like, for example, for me, I didn't even know quantitative existed until, like, a year into my trading. I just was, was learning trading. So, mm -hmm. did you know right away, like, this is you, this is your, you're the quants? Well, when I first retired, I had a stockbroker, not the one that lost 75 grand for me, but one that you had to have a stockbroker to buy and sell stocks. And I didn't short then. I didn't know what short was yet. But uh, I would go have lunch with him downtown, and we would talk about the market, and he would say, here's what I recommend, and here's why. I'd run home and make charts of whatever he recommended, and I could look at the charts and just tell whether I wanted to buy that or not. Mm -hmm. And, um, I mean, one of the things that I bought and did really well with was um, uh, waste management systems. They're still doing really well. It's a great thing to have waste management, right? Mm -hmm. We're even more conscious about that now. But I don't pick and choose stocks. I don't jump from here to there. I do one thing over and over and over again. If you're doing it right, trading's boring. Yeah, yeah. If absolutely. it's exciting, you're probably doing something wrong. Yeah. Yeah, or people chasing action mm -hmm. or, you know, seeking other things out of the market than actually being like a profitable trader is mm -hmm. actually, it is, it's just very boring. It's very mm -hmm. routine. Mm -hmm. So I have 12 stocks that I follow. So I trade the S&P 500 every day on a five minute chart. I used to trade weekly charts and then daily charts and then 60 minute charts and now it's five minute charts. But on stocks, I trade daily charts. So I'm not buying and selling, buying and selling stocks. I don't really, I, I guess I swing trade stocks, but I don't trade them the way I do the S&P. The S&P is short and long, short and long, really quick. So you trade, you said 12 stocks mm -hmm. and the S&P, mm -hmm. is that your go-to? That's it. Yeah, and um, and I'm an eight-figure trader too. Awesome, that's that's awesome. So, but like, when did you decide to stick to these? Oh, because that's a good because question. Sunny Bands applies for everything. It does. It does. So when did you decide these? Are well, your I have another indicator. You know how uh, Elizabeth Warren say, "I have a plan for that." Well, I have an indicator for that. So everything that I want to research, I use TradeStation to write an indicator and then a strategy, and I test the strategy. So I have an indicator I call PHW, which is Potential Hourly Wage, because I wanted to know how much money is available in this symbol, any symbol, stock, mutual funds, whatever. I used to trade mutual funds, too. So you want to know, is there money in it? The things you were showing up there, they didn't have a good PHW. So I look at everything with the PHW analysis first. It draws yellow dots at the ideal turning points. And then you add up all the values, and then you take 60% of that value. Because I think that you can leave 20% on the table on entry and 20% on exit and still make 60% of the move. And that's what this PHW is. It's 60% of the move. And I use that for everything. If it doesn't have a, P, a high enough PHW, I don't want to even think about it. It's, it's just a matter of mathematics. Yeah. And you don't have to have a degree in mathematics or anywhere near the knowledge that I have in mathematics. All you have to do is be logical. That's, that's where I'm coming from is the logic. Awesome. And Sonny, to start to wrap it up, okay, so how can people find you and uh, yeah, and when yeah, when are you going to be doing the next uh, podcast or Sunny Bands? Intro? I never know. I never know. People call me up like you did. You just yeah. find the number on the website and give me a call. I'm hoping maybe uh, Austin will give me oh, a call. Oh yeah, yeah, we definitely connected with Austin. Austin was here at the conference. We just finished the podcast. I sat by him over there. Oh, oh yeah, nice, nice, really so, nice man. Yeah, he's great, and he has a great podcast. We uh, yeah, great friend of ours. So yeah, we'll definitely have you guys, uh, in, nice. you know, in touch with a podcast, and it's always great, you know, people to hear your story. And also, we didn't we didn't touch too much on like your, you know, 
what you were f up against as a as a woman trader. In you want to talk then. about that real quick? Yeah, let's let's talk about it. Yeah. Muriel Siebert was the first woman to ever get a seat on the New York Stock Exchange, and that was in the 70s, 1970-ish. And after that, there really weren't very many. I think Linda Rasky started a year before I did. Mm -hmm. But when I called the floor of the S&P pit on the, on the CME exchange, I'd say, this is Sonny Harris, and my account number is such and such. Please buy 20 at the market. And after the third time of that, they said, you don't need to say all that. Just say, Sonny, buy 20. Uh -huh. and I said, why? How do you know who I am? They said, you're the only woman that calls the floor. So that's wow. where it was when I started. But I've never noticed that I'm a woman or you're a man. We're just both people. Because all of my fellow students were men. Mm -hmm. um, all of my, my uh, people that I worked with at Lockheed when I first got out of college, all the engineers were men. That just seemed normal to me. So it didn't bother me. I didn't even think of the fact that I was the only woman. And that's why you're successful. You know, you just focus on, on what you do best. And yeah, I've got a problem yeah. to solve. I'm going to solve it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thanks, guys, for tuning in. And, uh, yeah, well, stay tuned for Sunny on Austin Silver's podcast. Fantastic. Thank you. And this was a great, great conference. Yeah, absolutely. You did Thank good. Thank you. Thank you.